Good evening. I'm Rick Dancer. Welcome to The Buck Stops Here. Why does the buck stop here? Because it really is up to us as people, as a community, uh, to, to call things out when they get called out. Um, and this is a perfect show tonight. Uh, Scott and Lisa Weld own Buck's Sanitary Service. They sponsor our shows. I, I just call them and say, hey, here's what the stow I got for you. Are you okay with that? And he's like, yes, because it's, they don't always have to agree with our content. But what we want to do is make sure that people are getting a voice and people with stories that aren't heard all the time are getting a voice. A friend of mine passed this along to me the other day. Um, and I'm going to show you really quickly some pictures here. This is a mural that is now in downtown Eugene. And it's depicting, um, I guess, an officer uh, it was a shooting in Eugene at Cascade Middle School in January of 2019. And that right there is the image of Charles Landeros. And he was a father who was uh, had a gun at Cascade Middle School and uh, pulled it on the police and then was shot and killed by police. Um, here to talk with us a little bit about that uh, is... Charles's ex-wife, I have to do this really quick this way. There we go. And I'm going to bring her on. Shayla has been in the news. Thank you, Shayla, for being here. You're welcome. And you've been on the news and out there talking about this. How? <laughs> That's your end. <laughs> I had the last phone call. She has that one. <laughs> hey, it's life. You know, it's live. Tell it's Well, it's not TV, but it's live. You're going to keep bugging you. So, how did you find out that your husband was depicted in this mural? Um, somebody called you and told you? Yeah, I got, uh, it started with a text message. So the first text message was like, oh my gosh, have you seen this? And from there, I, I went online to see if I could find it. And I just see in my newsfeed, people are posting videos and pictures of it. What, t tell us, um, Let's go do a little rerun of what happened on that day in January 11th of 2019. Uh, you and your husband are estranged. Um, he's your ex-husband at this point. You have two children at the school. Can you kind of tell the story for folks, okay, Shayla? Um, so it, it actually started a few days before that. So the shooting happened on a Friday. And on the Sunday before that, um, Charlie, that's what I call him, Charlie. Uh, Charlie had taken my daughter um, without consent uh, in violation of the court order. And I had spent days, you know, figuring out what I was going to do about it and come uh, at the end of Christmas break there. So a couple of days into it, he withdrew her from her current school, which was uh, the William Leadership Academy. And withdrew her from her school and re-enrolled her in a new school, which was Cascade Middle. And I had that morning, Friday morning, I had been at the courthouse um, filing for immediate danger. And, um, and I was making some of my paperwork. So they said, uh, if you have your court order, your daughter's supposed to be with you. It's all in here. If you know where she's at, you can go get her. So I went, I had through guessing really Cascade was in his school district. I went down to Cascade and I just said, is my daughter enrolled here? And they said, well, who's your daughter? And I gave him her name and they said, well, who are you? And I said, well, I'm her mother. And I said, well, I have a court order right here showing, you know, she's supposed to be with me. He took her illegally. I was at the courthouse all morning, you know, just kind of walked them through it. They reviewed the paperwork and then the principal had said, well, because of the circumstances, we'd like to call the school resource officer in just to go over the paperwork. We don't want to make a wrong move. And I said, yeah, no problem. Um, so while I was waiting, I saw the receptionist making the phone call. And I knew right then what she was doing. And I, this has been the hardest part for me to accept. The receptionist took it upon herself to call Charlie and say, hey, um, we have this woman down here saying she's the mother and she has this court order. And I'm just wondering if you have any updated paperwork and which notified him that I was there. And at which point he just said, I'll be right there. And so he headed down there, um, not knowing that the police were already on their way. That When I say the police, it was the school resource officer. 
which is a police officer, but it's right. not like they called in the brigade. It was just, they were like, hey, can you come over here? He was at Lamont, which is right next door and look at this. So that's kind of what started all of it. And I know um, they had conversations with me. They had conversations with him. They had said, well, you know, the court documents here say that she's supposed to go with her mother. So we're going to send her with her mom, but you're welcome to go to court. You can fight it. You can whatever. But legally right now we got to send her with her mom. And he at first kind of accepted that and started to leave. And then he stopped in the hallway, which I, is where the body cam footage that everyone else saw picks up. And he started kind of protesting like, well, you don't have the authority to tell me to leave. I don't have to leave. And out of sheer coincidence, my daughter is only her second day at that school, forgot her locker combination and asked her teacher if she could go get it. And they didn't know that any of this was going on down by the front office. So they said, yeah, sure, you know, go down there. So here comes my daughter walking down the hall. And I, a big misconception for a lot of people who have made comments on that video is you see Charlie take a step. And a lot of people have said, he was going, he was going to leave. He was stepping towards the door. And that's actually false. Um, he was saw my daughter. He was taking a step toward my daughter. And when you hear bleeps, uh, which would sound like cussing because they bleeped it out, it actually was him calling my daughter's name. So at that point, uh, the officers, now this child's involved. So they said, We're placing you under arrest. And from there, you know, he resisted the arrest. He then pulled out the gun and tried to kill the officers, which resulted in him being shot. And your daughter saw that? Yeah, so immediately when she saw her dad with the cops and they grabbed him, she immediately ran towards him. I mean, she loves her dad. She loves her dad, I mean, most daughters do. And she's just like, dad, no, stop. You can hear some of that yelling in the video if you listen for it. If you know what you're listening for, you can actually hear her yelling like, dad, stop, no. And she followed right beside him. At one point in the video, you can see her foot, maybe a, a foot away from him. I mean, she was right there, right there. Right. So now this mural comes up and you and I have been talking a little bit prior to this and you feel like, you know, this is a man who was suffering with PTSD and, and you loved your ex-husband, um, your kid's father. Um, but this, well, tell people, it, it makes it feel like they're making him out to be a hero and the cop out to be a bad guy. They definitely like, in my opinion, that is exactly what they're trying to do. They're jumping on this bandwagon of all these things that are going on all over the United States right now where... They're trying to dehumanize and criminalize police officers. And there, I, I really feels like the city of Eugene's just jumping right on top of that by allowing this to go up. And it's really not fair because in that moment, the officers were defending their lives and they weren't just defending their lives. They were defending, in my opinion, our lives. I, it took me a minute to accept this but when he came down there, he didn't know the cops were there. He had no idea. I mean, he, he was told I was there. And he grabbed his gun, which, okay, may, maybe he has his gun with him all the time. He did have a concealed carry. And I do know that he often carried a gun with him. But he also grabbed a backpack full of ammunition. And I truly believe in that moment, he came down there with the intent of leaving with his daughter at any cost. And those officers are the only things that stopped him from doing that. And he wasn't supposed to take her to a different school. You had custody of the child. So we, we actually had joint custody. Okay. Uh, but specifically in the court order, I was given um, full authority on all matters, medical, educational, and religious. And his visitation was actually, he would get her them. Uh, we have two kids together. So he would get the kids every weekend and after school every four months. So I would have them for four months straight, and then he would get them on the weekends and after school. So his visitation really with them in the court order was very little. And actually leading up to his death, 
there was a lot of things with the FBI investigating him and he really was going off the deep end mentally. And he hadn't actually spent time with his kids in months. I mean, they didn't want to be around him because of his radical behaviors. And he agreed, you know, that they didn't want to be there. He wasn't going to make them. So he definitely wasn't supposed to be around them in violation of the court order, in violation of the kids' wishes. I mean, all the way around, he definitely wasn't supposed to have her and definitely wasn't supposed to be withdrawing her from schools and not telling me where she is. So when you discovered that the city of Eugene put in a fifth of the money to pay for this mural, what goes through your head? I was pissed. I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss. Am I allowed to cuss? Oh yeah, you can cuss. I was pissed. I, this, is, this is a city where something very dramatic happened in their city, at their school, their officers with their children, a school full of children, and they donated money to help memorialize the person who initiated all of this. I cannot believe that they would do that. Like, I not only for my daughter's sake or or my sake, but the officers and the really the parents of all the kids who go to that school. That is such a slap in everybody's face. You I said don't you know said how to, got away with that. You said to me earlier. This reminded you of this. It's it seems it's the same thing to you as if. Remember what we were talking? Yeah. Uh, to me, it would be the same thing as if they painted a mural of Kip Kinkle. You have somebody come in who devastates an entire city and a really a state of, it, it was national news. People were devastated all over that this had happened in front of children at a school and then you memorialize them. So what do you think should be done? It needs to be removed. I mean, he, it needs to be removed. Charlie in that moment was mentally ill he wasn't well i mean it takes in my opinion it takes a mentally ill person to just shoot an innocent person or try to shoot an innocent person no matter what and it needs to be removed i i'm just beyond words upset about the city contributing to this it's it's not okay i mean he he tried to kill somebody he tried to kill the police officer he potentially was there to kill school officials and myself. And that's not the Charlie me and my kids want to remember. And I've worked really hard to work on reforming how my kids think about police officers. Um, I don't want them to hate cops just because a cop took their dad's life. And we've gotten to this understanding where they know now, you know, that he did something that he shouldn't have done and sadly resulted in his death. And this is a hundred steps backwards from that. And this is teaching people all over that it's okay to do those things. Go shoot up a school because they'll paint a mural of you. You'll you'll be infamous. Then make you infamous. You do something horrible. So are you getting any blowback from this from people? Um, you know, you've been very public and talking about it. Um, has there been anything, I haven't talked to you about this. I'm, <clears throat> I'm curious, have you had any blowback from people or, or are you getting support? Um, I, I've been getting blowback, definitely blowback, but more support than blowback. I think the majority of the comments and messages that I've gotten have been people saying, you know, I'm really glad that you said something. I agree with you. This is disrespectful. I'm sorry this is happening um, to your family. But you definitely have those people who are, um, you know, because I don't agree with this mural, I'm obviously a racist. Um, I'm obviously a, a Trumpster or they're going to categorize me however they want. And that's a big problem just in general in society right now. If you say so, people don't so, agree with. So, so you're the ex-wife and the mother of these children. You see what happens. You you. You make a complaint, and then you're labeled and by by people as these things. When you were married to the man who's depicted in the in the mural, do, do you kind of walk away and go, you know? That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And and then if you if I, you know, I I've been called these things, and I'll just say like, you know, I'll be sure to tell my brown daughter that. 
I'm sure she'd be really interested to know that I'm racist because she didn't pick up on that. It's just, it's ridiculous. And from the very first day of the shooting, people tried to make it a race issue. Immediately, they made it a race issue. The CLDC in particular came out and did this little interview with his brother and just said, you know, he was killed because he was brown and not a single one of them was there. Not a single one of them knew what happened. They hadn't really released the body cam footage. It's never been a race issue. And so, it's like any logical person who watched that video would know that race was not involved in that. It was strictly a safety issue. And it's- Because if someone's at a, at a school with a gun um, firing that direction, you have a major, that's a major problem. Huge. And I, I would say that I, People can correct me if I'm wrong here. The people who are standing up saying it's a race issue and all those things, they didn't have kids at that school. It wasn't personal for them. They weren't there. They didn't see it. They don't have kids at school. I I think that had their kids been a couple feet away from stray bullets that if you watch the video, he had no control over. I mean, he had an officer wrestling with him while he's firing his gun. Bullets are going every which direction. He didn't have control over his bullets at that moment. So if they would have had a kid next to that, I think they would feel a lot differently. So last thing I'll ask you probably <laughs> is if if you could sit down, um, let's say the city council were out here watching. Oh, I for, I've been forgetting to get comments. There's a ton of comments on here. Um, and I'm sorry, guys, I just got immersed in this conversation and I forgot to bring any of you on here. There's just like a ton of people talking on here. Um, anyway, if you could sit down before the city council and the other groups that sponsored this and, and say, um, have your peace, this is your voice. Tell me what you would say. I would say after all the traumas that myself and my kids and the officers involved have had to endure, if you cared even a morsel about any of that and what happened that day, you would have this removed. You would have it removed. There's got to be some better candidates out there. Okay. Now, when you say that, um, you get kind of choked up. This is, this is kind of hard for you. It is because I, I love Charlie and that's the thing is I love him. So the reason I didn't speak out after the shooting was because I knew that people wouldn't understand how I could denounce what he did and still love him. And so I kept my mouth shut after the shooting, but I really feel like this has gone too far and it's continuing to hurt my kids. It's continuing to hurt the officers involved. It's continuing to hurt me. And so I have to say something, but it is hard for me to say, I love this man, take his mural down. Right. Because is there a part of you as a mom who says, um, you know, your dad is your dad and I want you to love him, but he, 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 was, he had some problems and you can't, you can't honor that. This is, it's been a hard conversation that we have to have yeah. On a semi-regular basis. And for the most part, we've kind of gotten to that point. Um, but it was really hard at first to be able to say, you know, you it's okay to love your dad. It's okay to say I love my dad. It's okay to have his we have life-size photos in our house. <laughs> uh, we printed them for the memorial. My kids wanted them on the wall. So we have these giant photos of him all around the house. We have picture frames full of his pictures. And that's okay because he was a really good dad for a lot of years. And you're honoring that, that part of the dad, not the moment. Yeah. But, but it's okay to, to say dad was wrong. Dad, dad was wrong in what he did. And it sucks because it cost him his life. I would have loved for him to have been wrong and like maybe not have been killed. Um, but it is the way of the world that this just is how it is and we have to deal with those consequences. So that is a hard conversation and I have to have it all the time and it doesn't go away. I mean, it never goes away really. 
So do you own Conway's? I do. Yeah. Somebody on here just came on and said, that's the woman who they have donated so much stuff to people in the McKinsey and, and, and all the kind of things that have been going on. Yeah. We're still, we're still doing it for evacuees. We did simmer it down quite a bit, but you can always come in for a free meal. You don't got a place to go. Um, it is genuinely my pleasure to be able to do that. I'm really sorry for everything that happened to all those people. So do you sometimes feel like because you're the, it, it's, it's interesting with people. I really like having this conversation with you. I have, I rarely, I, I, I haven't met anyone quite as honest as you like, live like this before and that's a compliment because because i bet you get disregarded because you're the ex I, I read a comment actually online and said who gives a fuck what the ex has to say and seriously I that, and i was like well i mean i was one of the few adults present at the time of the shooting and i speak for his children i and i'm not saying i speak for his children like i get to decide what they say this is my children's opinion on their own. Okay, and do you see the comment on here? Somebody, uh, yeah, so should the kids be speaking too or does only her opinion count? Uh, see, there you go. Um, my kids. Uh, How old are they? Too much detail here. Um, they're 12 and 14 right now. Um, one of my daughters, her first reaction was, is a quote, why would they do that? Why would they do that? Um, I don't, I don't speak for my kids in a term where I get to decide what my kids say, but I can say with all honesty here that my kids and I are on the same page about this and on the same page about whether or not we think it's okay. If one of my kids stood up and said, mom, I, I would really like that mural to stay. I kind of like, I want to go see it. I would, I would not be speaking right now, but my kids are. 100% on board that they, they don't want to go look at it. So one right. of them would look at it on um, social media. Um, on I think it was a news report where she saw it. And the other one doesn't even want to look. She right. said it has nothing to do with it. And as a parent, you have the right. I wouldn't let my 12 and 14 year old people be put before the media. And Canseco, I don't know if that's your name. I know who you are. I know you're very um, against police officers. We've talked before. Um, besides the school officials, what about the lady who called Charlie? Why don't they talk? They can talk all they want. My show is about the mom. And I am a private businessman and I get to choose what I'm talking about. And tonight we're talking with the mother. If you want to go ask those people, they've had their chances to talk about other things. They can. Um, but I am here to focus on what the ex-wife and the mother of the children are thinking of the mural. Um, a lot of times, Keseko, if that's how you say it, I think people throw things in like this because you're trying to take the conversation in the direction you want it to go. And this is my show and the show will go in the direction that I want it to go. And that is to give voice to the mother now. If Eugene wants to call and talk to me and they want to take this down and they want to say something, I'm more than happy to put them on and let them explain why that happened. Um, that's fine. I'm more than happy to do that. But this is a technique that people use to try to turn the conversation to their point of view. And you don't get to do that on my show because I did that for 25 years at KEZI. I listened to that kind of stuff and I had to report everything. Keep advancing the narrative. You do that, Kaseko. You go ahead and call all those people. This is advancing the narrative, and this is somebody who wants to talk. So um, that's how it works on my show. So anyway, I'm sorry, uh, Shayla, to interrupt, but stuff like that really bothers me because it's so easy to try to discredit people when you don't agree with them. It's much harder to be an adult and be mature and listen to people and allow them to have their conversation. And that is, um, it, it, that kind of stuff pisses me off. And I love the fact that you are saying this. I think you're being very open, very kind. I think you're being kind. Um, I hope that the city and these other groups that sponsored this, um, maybe there's a better way to do the mural. Maybe we could do a mural that also gets their point of view out, but somebody else's too. But uh, all you're asking is that his p face be taken off of that mural. And, and I don't even think it would have been nearly as bad if the other 
things like having the police officer in the mural wasn't there. I mean, that those two things should never go together. They should not be going together. And it wouldn't have been so bad if they would have, I know that Charlie was involved in a lot of like uh, protests about other things in the community, like um, sexual harassment on campuses and in the military. He actually, he did do a lot of those things. If they would have been portraying him in almost any other setting of his activism, it wouldn't have been so bad. But here they put him with a police officer after he tried to kill one. And it's, it's clearly to me, it, they are trying to get an image of that day out there. Right. And, um, I don't but know. Is that the best we can come? Isn't there, do we have nothing else that has happened that way? I, I, I guess that would be my first question is, is there, <laughs> there is the best if there's, have. if there's something else that is a, that warrants that, because if it does, then that, then I say, you know, there's a mural that, that should be going up. But if it's, did they, somebody's asking, did they consult the city or any of these arts groups or anyone consult you, the family, um, about any of this, so that they no, were the mural. Nobody consulted um, my kids, which would be his next of kin would be my kids. Um, nobody consulted us, talked to us, or even informed us that it was going up. I did see an article that from the artist where he had said that he had gotten approval from his brother, um, who we have had no contact with since that day. Um, but as far as us, no. But I, here's my, my point and my thought. Because you and your daughters were also victims in this. I mean, not I, I hate the word victims and survivors. But I mean, you. so wouldn't you, if you're tied into this, um, wouldn't being consulted even if not legally warranted, but just ethically or morally to say, you know, you were there, this is going to happen. We're putting city dollars into this. Um, and, you know, we just want you to know it's happening. Um, or how about this? What do you think? <laughs> you know, it happened to your family. Um, or hello. Um, what do you think? Bill of notification. Right. And that's the thing is it's okay. People are saying freedom of speech and all these things. All right. Set the legal side of it aside. Like morally, everybody knows what happened and everybody is aware that my daughter had to watch her dad get shot in the head. And not once did the city of Eugene even like think that that would be a question an issue, anything like that. And they can't play stupid. Like they didn't know. I mean, it was, they know. Everybody knows what happened that day. It was so big. And if, if they're not that up to date on current events, then they probably shouldn't be part of city council. Um, Kaseko had another comment, and I want to make sure I'm clear. I, I, if you're addressing me, I don't know if someone else addressed you and said, I don't hate cops. I hate cops who don't take accountability. And if that's your opinion, that's fair. I didn't say that you hate. I said you don't like cops because we've had conversations before. So I will stand corrected that you don't like cops who don't take accountability. I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth and not even yours, especially not yours, because we disagree on some things. But I agree with you there. I don't I want cops to take accountability. And I think, well, we'll just leave it at that. I don't know what other people want. Um, I yeah. Is there anything else uh, while I have you here? Um, uh, here's something semi relevant. But I've always wanted to get this word out, but I never wanted to go on the news. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, which I'm sure nobody knows this, um, the vice principal of Cascade Middle School at the time, who I believe now is the actual principal, and his name is not going to come to me right this second. Um, that day, uh, when everything started and the gunfire started, he actually ran outside toward the gunfire to try to get my daughter. What? And he grabbed my daughter and he brought her inside. But of course, at this point, it had been too late. Um, she had already seen way too much. And I've I, I've told him, I've told him, I've gone back to Cascade, just to give him a hug. And um, that is like the definition. Officer, Officer Tim and Officer Aaron, definitely heroes also. But 
that's a real hero. And I, I don't know that anybody's ever given him the credit that he deserves for what he did that day. Um, but he definitely was willing to go risk his entire life to save a child. Wow. I've always wanted to be able to tell people that. So, well, I am so glad that you did that here because th that that's guts. You know what I mean? When you hear gunfire and you're a school administrator and you go running for the kids because you say, I care about kids and you really live up to that. That's pretty powerful. And there are tons of stories. And at Thurston, the same thing when that gunfire started, you know, teachers and, and even students that were helping other students. You know, I, out of a conversation like this, Shayla, I think you are such a gutsy woman. And I think your daughters are very lucky to have you as an example of how to do, <laughs> how to do life. You know, hey, we do the best we can. And uh, the fact that you come up and, and say something, you know, that is that's really cool. You stand up for your kids. I hope something happens. Uh, Eugene, I hope we do something. Um, links is what I've been telling everybody. I mean, if you if you care at all about my kids feelings about this, about Officer Tim's feelings about this, about my feelings about this, just file as many complaints as you can. I think that that's the only legal avenue that we have. OK, Shayla. Thank you. You guys, we just made this happen like an hour ago because we were talking on the phone and she's got, I just got done getting my tattoo. She's going in for an all day tattoo tomorrow. So we had to kind of work this through to get it through. And thank you so much for being here. Okay. I'm going to say a couple more things and, but thank you. Cause I won't, I won't see you again until we let me know if anything happens. Okay. I will. Absolutely. And if somebody starts being mean to you, you let me know. <laughs> yeah. I can't. The only thing I have is this fork and tongue, but it can lash. <laughs> okay. All that's right. all you need. Yeah, oh, that's right. I think so. All right, you guys. So there it is. Um, the buck stops here. Uh, thank you, Buck Sanitary Service, for sponsoring shows like this so we can hear from people in our community um, like Shayla. Um, and wow, what do... Um, if you go on the, the city of Eugene website and you go to the city council, I don't know if they do this at the city, the county does. You can hit all counselors, I think, or just write up one letter and send it to all the city counselors and the mayor. And um, here's my tip. Don't be nasty. Nobody listens to nasty. We have some people on here. Nobody listens to nasty. So what you do is you kindly, but, Firmly. Kindness is not wimpy. Kindness is firm. So you be firm and say, I don't think Charlie's picture should be represented in that mural. And either redo it, take it down, do a community where we come up with an idea for a mural that's maybe more fitting or whatever. But state your opinion in a kind manner, but a firm manner, and then keep bugging them. And if you are one of the people that sponsored this, and I, I would hope that, you know, your heart would be feeling like, uh, you know, and there's nothing wrong with making a mistake and being wrong. But there is something wrong with making a mistake and not owning up to it and not fixing it. So, again, I am not a journalist. I'm Rick Dancer. I'm just a guy who has a show. And so um, <laughs> that's and that's what I do. And I do it because we have sponsors like Buck Sanitary Service who sponsor our show. So next time you have to go to the bathroom and you're at a porta potty and you look up and it's not a Bucks, go anyway. I don't expect you to wait. But if you do see a Bucks porta potty, go in there and say, especially when you're going into the bathroom, think of me. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are having a party um, or some kind of event, think of Bucks to, or your corporation, your company. They sponsor our stuff so that we can do this. We can't do this without sponsors. Um, wow. That was a good way to start a week, don't you think? A mama bear fighting for kids always. Um, there you go. All right. I will end this here. Shayla, thank you. I can see you're still there. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Gutsy. And obviously you need to go to Conway's. I mean, if you're going to go in and see her, go say hi. 
I mean, they obviously have good food. Everybody's on here talking about how wonderful they are. So there you go. Um, there we go. All right. Have a good night, you guys. I'll see you later. Again, the buck stops here.